Hello and welcome again to my workshop. Today's video has come about through numerous uh, ladies actually that have uh, sent me messages and put in the comment section as well um, that they would like to do some wood turning but they don't think they would have the physical strength. Well, let me tell you right now, it doesn't matter whether you're male or female, um, there is very little physical strength really in operating a wood lathe or a metal lathe for that matter. Um, the harder you press in or force the chisel into the material, obviously the more physical strain is going to uh, be imparted onto the tool. So you can adjust the amount of physical strength required by how much you push the chisel in. Basically it's as simple as that. Um, everybody gets catches. Now a catch is when uh, the chisel digs in a little bit too deep and uh, either it can uh, force the material to come out of the lathe uh, or it can just uh, flick the tool up. Uh, sometimes it, it can come out of your, your, your hands. Um, it's very rare that there's any injuries at all because you wear the appropriate gear. I wear a full face mask. Um, I mean I've been wood turning for 50 years and I've never had a serious injury. Uh, but that doesn't go to say that some people have. Mostly injuries occur from you doing something silly, <laughs> basically. Um, but if, if you are very careful and you know don't be afraid of the machine, you'll be fine. Um, you know and you've really got to sort of get into your own stride and learn yourself. No one else can do it for you. How to, um, how much pressure to put on the machine, uh, onto the uh, chisel and which angle to actually hold it to, to get the best results that you, you require. Um, and watching my videos, I hope you can, you can sort of see in my commentary uh, if you listen to that, will give you a good indication of what to do. So I'm going to start this off today right at the very basic level uh, for you know people who uh, are interested and you know sort of uh, females and to show you that anybody can do this. Um, if children you know, under the age of about 15, want to try this, you really need to do it with a parent or a guardian. Don't go messing with lathes on your own. Uh, that's all I can say about that. Um, and really, it's just common sense. Uh, you know, you're dealing with a, a, a machine that um, can, can bite you if you sort of uh, mistreat it. So um, all I can say is do it with care, operate the machine with care and uh, later on I'll, I'll show you uh, where to um, purchase something, uh, you know, a lathe like this, uh, um, different machinery. So first of all we're going to choose a piece of wood to uh, make a small bowl with today. Um, now I had five tonne of wood delivered yesterday so we'll just take a walk outside and uh, we'll see what we can find. Okay so this is um, five tonne of wood that I had delivered yesterday so you know I find a lot of my raw material you know sort of uh, I find a lot of my raw material in uh, this. This is um, Tasmanian oak um, <clears throat> you know, it's uh, oak trees from uh, that's been cleared from uh, farmland, and well, there's a good example there. 
Okay, we should be able to make a, a nice little bowl out of that if I just cut this off here, mount it in the small lathe, and I think that would make a very reasonable bowl. I mean, this is all dried out, this was all cut last year, um, so it's all reasonably dried out. And you can tell that this this is a dead old oak tree from oh, years ago, and they've just cut this one up as well. You know, it's a bit of a mixture. But um, anyway, we'll just take this piece in and um, we'll see what we can do with it. I've had a quick look at this piece of uh, piece of oak. It's quite heavy, probably weighs about probably about uh, ten kilos. It's 2.2 .2 pounds to a kilo, by the way. Um, and just in this segment of wood that I've got, um, there are 200 growth rings, approximately. So that means just this section here is 200 years old. Um, and as you can see, the, the rings go here. Center of the tree is here somewhere. Outside of the tree is somewhere out here, so it's... 400 years plus old tree. Um, you know, these trees are cut down, yes, in Tasmania. They are cleared for um, farm land. You know, you just, uh, you know, it's not old growth trees that are just discriminant, just uh, cut down for just firewood. That's not true. Um, a lot of the trees are damaged with bugs and, you know, they've got limbs falling off and they're dangerous, so the tree gets brought down. Um, so this is probably one of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, trim off this section here uh, with the bandsaw. You don't have to have a bandsaw, you can do it with a manual saw, but... Uh, you know, that's hard work. <laughs> um, and just make it sort of um, a bit better shape to uh, mount into the, the uh, t this is the headstock by the way, and this is a faceplate here, so I'm going to mount it on the faceplate. So this is the most basic and probably the smallest wood lathe I would personally uh, recommend. Um, this particular one is a 550 watt uh, motor. Uh, it has a, a variable speed control. It has uh, inside here uh, a belt drive and it has uh, three separate speeds. Um, and th they will go all the way from 650 RPM uh, all the way up through to 3,800 RPM. Now, you only need the fastest speed for making things like a, a, a pen or something like that, you know, with a wooden um, shank on it. Um, you need high speed then. But for a bowl, um, about 650 RPM is fine. At least the size bowl you can get into here. Um, this is what you would probably get as a basic lathe. So you have a headstock here. With a, this handle here is just to hold steady uh, and to be able to screw things on because this is uh, on, a, on a screw thread here. Um, this is a flange, a mounting flange. Uh, this end here, that's a, a, this is what we call a live center. Okay, it's got a, a very sharp point on it and it's bare in here, it spins. This supports the other half of the material. And this is your tool rest that is uh, very adjustable. Okay, so this is the basic machine. Okay, so t to remove the flange off here, you're normally uh, given a lever that fits in and that simply undoes and that unscrews and 
and you can also fit, this is a spur drive which fits into a taper in there which is called a Morse taper and uh, then you can use the tailstock then to squeeze a piece of material and trap it in between these points and this spur drive will drive the wood. Okay, there's also another um, holding device which is called a chuck. I'll just get one. And this is this is a chuck for, for a wood lathe. You see it's got four four teeth on this and this screws on like so. So then you can catch out of your bowl with this. Uh, now I'll take you through the process of making a small bowl using these different tools. This chuck probably does not come with the lathe and neither does the chisels. So we'll just take this off. Now the, these are typical professional tools. This is a spindle gouge and this is a bowl gouge. It's much longer, okay, because with this one you reach over the tool rest here much further. So you need more leverage to, to hang on to it. Um, you can also get a lot smaller tools too. Similar to these. Now these are detail gouges and uh, this is like a, a finishing tool. Okay. These as well would be sold separately. Now I'll just um, I'll show you the type of places that you can get this same exact lathe. Well, this is my YouTube uh, page of my main channel. To get to my second channel, there's a little tag here on the banner. Of course, this is on a computer. Um, on a phone, I think you have to go into uh, the, the About tag, and in there you'll be able to get to my second channel there. Anyway, okay. Now, 50% of my viewers are obviously from the USA. In the US, there is a company called Grizzly. Now, I am not associated with this company, but what I can tell you is there is the exactly identical machine to what I'm using, but it's a different color. Uh, and I would recommend this one. It's got an electronic uh, um, RPM meter, so you know exactly what, type, what speed the lathe is operating at. And let me see, this particular one here, GO766, this is my large lathe, if you wanted a bigger lathe. So that gives you, um, you know, sort of the pricing of these different tools, like uh, $600 for the, the smaller one, bear in mind, You've got to pay extra for a chuck and the chisels and the same for the larger lathe as well. These are the ones, the identical ones to what I have. Um, so that gives you a good idea and this is uh, 3,600. Also bear in mind you've got to pay extra for the, uh, the chuck which is much much bigger. Uh, it's a 5 inch chuck on this particular model. Um, and of course the, the chisels. Now you can pay, you know, probably $600 for the chuck and probably $250 maybe for the, a good chisel set. So, you know, the outlay for the larger machine, you know, obviously it's a larger machine, so the outlay is going to be more. You, you, you're looking at, um, you know, four and a half thousand US dollars to kit yourself out for that one. For this one you're looking at around about a thousand dollars with a chuck and the chisels. So that gives you a good idea. 
and to, you know to operate this machine is very very easy I'll just demonstrate actually the um, the um, speed control and how to start the motor it's very simple make sure that this is turned all the way anti-clockwise but be gentle with it you know it's like a, a volume control on a radio okay so just turn it back till it stops press the button there's a couple of seconds and it will start up you see we're doing 600 620 600 nearly 650 obviously this will alter this the rpm of this will alter plus or minus maybe 50 rpm depending on what your voltage is okay so if you're in a like five o'clock in the afternoon uh, where everybody's cooking and this that and the other you get slightly lower voltage so it's going to affect this it's really minimal you don't really have to worry about it I only mention it because you know when it says on here oh it's 650 revs and you're only doing 630 it's not broken okay it's a result of the voltage drop on the mains power within your household and it's running you can hear it maybe you can't don't know whether this microphone here is picking it up it's very quiet it's not noisy okay it's doing 1500 rpm there so the voltage is slightly higher so it's very quiet and to turn it off you just press the red button there okay so I just knocked off a little bit of the waste material made it more sort of a even shape so the next thing to do is get your faceplate and just position it as accurately as you can by eye in the middle there and you get some good wood screws and screw your faceplate on Now it's on there very very firm. Don't worry about screwing into the wood it's not going to affect the finished product at all because what we're going to do is mount this on here and this is going to be the back of the bowl and I'm going to show you in the back of the bowl or the back end here how to machine it and what to put in here so you can grab onto it with the chuck okay when you've turned it around and then we're going to scallop the inside all out to um, make a bowl so it doesn't matter if you've got screws in so we'll just put this on the end of the drive shaft here wind it in now with something like this it's very sort of uneven still and I personally to make it uh, more stable then just move that out the way there for a minute make sure you can turn it around I bring the tailstock up with the live center okay and I'll just move that a second <coughs> So bring this up, wind this out a bit, a bit too far. I want to make sure nothing catches here. It's going to be just fine. Okay, so you bring your tailstock up. Do you know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to get a chisel. And just take a little bit of a make a little bit of a flat on here so we can put this on because I'm not real happy with the way that's presented to that 
uh, it's not going to be really strong or not strong enough so I'm just going to get a chisel and just make a little bit of a flat spot there for this to go on to. Okay so the area that we're concerned with is just in the middle here. This is just a keep cheap chisel. So a little bit of a flat for this point to come up like that and tighten this up and tighten that in push it in tight like so so what you're doing is you're making sure this isn't going to come flying out at you because it's screwed on this end and this end is pushing up that way as well, tight against that face plate and it's supporting this end as well. So you're doing all the, or taking all the, you know, the measures to protect yourself and to hold the piece of material in place. Now just a word on safety, this is the minimum safety gear you should be wearing when operating a lathe. A face mask and a f sorry a full face mask and a respirator mask. The fibers from wood can give you cancer. So be warned. Minimum. Another good safety or tip um, the ideal height for a lathe okay to operate a lathe the center of the lathe which is the center of this shaft then and your tool rest should be approximately as you stand next to the the lathe the height of your elbow that's the ideal and safest height for a lathe. I have a, this is a, a welding bench actually, which is adjustable in height, which is ideal for me to put this bench lathe on. So uh, that's another uh, and a safety feature as well. Um, so you, you, you know, you set up the lathe to so you can operate it as safely as you can. Okay, so now the wood turning starts. So basically what I'm saying to you is, you only start your wood turning process when you are sure that it's as safe as it possibly can be. So now I'm going to start turning the outside of this with my bowl gouge. Now, a lot of people use a lot of different other tools, uh, but I find the best tool for me is a bowl gouge. I do uh, you know, 90% of my turning with a bowl gouge. So here we go. So what you do, you turn your material around and find your high spot, which is there. So this is going to... Uh, wobble a little bit so you have the lathe set at a low rpm as far back as you can go that way and start it up and don't stand directly in front of the material stand one side of it and then start it up and now we can start to take the high spots off So 
you can see we've started to remove some of the of the highest peaks now and as we machine down into the material a bit further um, we should stop a lot of the rocking around motion in fact if I start down here and take that out a bit because a lot of the weight is there so we'll just move our down here a bit There we go. Tighten that up there. So I'll gradually just machine this away, machine this away, and uh, you know it will stop all this rocking around. Here we go. If you push too hard, the lathe will nearly stop. So, you know, you are governed by that as well. The larger lathe, obviously, you can push as hard as you really want, and it won't stop. So, it's probably better for you to start learning how to a wood turn on these smaller lathes. Uh, actually, it's about time to move this uh, tool rest in. We're getting quite a gap here now. So, undo, oh. that way, it needs to be about, um, oh, quarter of an inch, five, six mil at the closest point, like that, turn it up nice and firm, tight, and always turn your material around to make sure it doesn't catch. Okay, we've got the sort of back end of the bowl more round now. I'm just changing now to my uh, red nose scraper because I find with this material I can fetch off a lot more, a lot quicker. Now we've got rid of the um, the lumpy bit, shall we say? There we go, and I speed, I'll speed the lathe up a bit as well. Eight hundred RPM now. Huh? I'm hardly putting any pressure on this at all. A little bit at a time. It's no specific shape to a bowl either. I mean, you know, this is just happening. The wood will actually determine the shape of the bowl. Because you'll find voids and knots and who knows what in it. You notice there I was pushing a little bit too hard, it's slowing the lathe up too much. So you get a, get a, get a bit of a sweet spot. Actually, starting to shape the mouth a little bit here now, or the neck. This is going to be the main body.
and let's stop the lathe and see what we've got. Well, we're starting to get a bit of shape there now, and of course there's a bit of a flat spot there and a flat spot there we've got to get rid of. So we're going to come down in diameter a bit more yet, before we're going to fully understand what the shape of our bowl is going to be. So I'll keep going with this now for a bit. Okay, we've nearly completely eliminated now any flat areas. Just a little tiny bit there, and a little bit there. So we'll just get rid of those very quietly, and then we'll start working on this back end. I think I need to take this in a bit. That will be... Okay. Just there. Okay. I'm just going to go and give my chisel a touch up on the stone to make it a bit sharper. Um, I won't show you that at this stage because that's a that's going to be a whole devoted video of sharpening chisels. We're actually going to do some of the shaping of the bowl now. I just don't want a too plain a sided bowl. So what I'm going to do is just take a bit of the material out here and make a bit of a divot. Uh, like so. You now you can make your, let your imagination run riot with yourself with, you know, there's no specific shape of a bowl. So we're just going to put a bit of detail, or quite a large detail there. Okay. And then round this. You can see a bit of shape coming there now. That's as far as we're going to go there with the back end. Now let's just shape this around here a little bit. Make a little bit of a, a lip for the neck here. And a little deeper. You know, this is very much like pottery, but with wood. So you can see we've got a quite a nice little bit of a shape going here now for the side of our, our little vase. So now what we're going to do, we're going to come around the back end here now and machine this off a bit and uh, we'll we'll make a, a bit of a, a device to hang on to the bottom end of our bowl here. Oh, hmm. Oh, we're going to have to shape that in a bit. No, it's going to have to be machined quite a bit up, I think. So, let's come around here. Like that. I'm going to machine a bit this away. Uh, to turn back to our bowl gauge again. What I'm actually making on the back here is a tenon to hold in our chuck. Doing a little bit more shape in here, the base. Change tool. A little bit of a flat, flat spot there somewhere, I think. 
Oh yeah. Oh, we've got to go down a little bit further yet. Let's see what we can do. Okay, what I'm machining on the back of here, and incidentally this tool is called a skew. Uh, you see it's angled, and it just so happens to be the same angle as the jaws in my chuck. I'll just grab that. Okay, there's the chuck. Now, this angle of these jaws inside here, the same angle as that. So, if you can imagine, this is uh, the reverse way around now, so when this hangs onto this, it pulls its way in that way tighter and grips really firm. That's what you want, a real firm grip on it. So I'll finish machining that and then we'll turn this around and mount the, uh, this bowl into our chuck. So here we go. Okay, so I've, I've got a detail gauge now that I'm going to use just to machine this away a bit. Just get a saw now and just cut that bit off. So now we have our tenon to grab onto and we're going to bore the inside of our bowl out now. Always remove the life center because it's very very sharp and you could get it, you, you know, dig your back of your hand in it or your elbow so take it off when you're not using it. So now we undo this. Very simple. You, and I keep on saying um, to you young ladies out there, you don't need any great strength. So don't be afraid, you can do it. Now we'll undo this now. You don't need one of these either, you can do it with a screwdriver. Now then. Off your chuck up. That's as tight as it needs to be done. Because as you are working on the outside of the bowl or the inside of the bowl, this chuck is tightening up on the thread in there so it's not going to come undone.
Okay, well, I'm working backwards here so you can actually see. So, undo this. And the jaws splay open. And then you offer your. I say, no great strength, two hands on him, do it up nice and firm and tight. I'll true up the outside now, because invariably when you turn it around you grip it, you crush the fibres of the wood. And it will take this off centre slightly, so we're gonna, just going to machine the outside of this again to bring it up on centre to this boss that we've just made. So as we're working on the outside, I've just brought the tailstock up and just holding that again. So I'll just clean up, first of all the outside, then I'm going to clear up this face, and then we're going to bore the inside out. So here we go. more detail now into the outside of our bowl and you can see now it's brought it up now true to the rear boss so now we're going to machine away some of this face So now we're going to start to scallop the inside out, which is I know a lot of you have been waiting for this. So now what I do is I set the tool rest then slightly lower than the center height, like so. The reason for that is because the cutting face then, which is just there, Okay, you, you rest in this on the tool rest, so that means that if you have this slightly lower than the center of that, you notice, when you rest this on there, the cutting surface is then in relation to the center of the material. It doesn't dig in so much. Now I'm going to have to move the camera a little bit because it's right where I want to be. <laughs> okay, so this is the easiest method I know of removing the inside of a bowl. Um, I'm just going to face this little bit off first and then we're going to drill out uh, partially the, the center. Why I drill the center is because the, the material isn't moving that fast past the end of the, the cutter lock. See, it's very, very slowly, it's hardly moving. And the, in fact, in the very center there, it's not moving at all. It's not until you come out here that the material is passing the cutting edge fast enough to do any real work. So I'm just going to drill out the um, center material there. It's not totally necessary but I, I do it just to make life easy. Okay this is a 25 millimeter spade bit so you set the 
lathe at a slow speed and start it up and then just feed it in like so And so on and so forth till you get down to the desired depth that you want. So now we get to the uh, interesting part that I think everybody <laughs> sort of waits to see is the hollowing out of the bowl. Um, no great uh, mystery with it. You just uh, just got to be very very careful and um, do things gradually. So here we go and I'll show you what I'm doing. So all I'm doing is I'm presenting the tool to the material and just very, very quietly taking a very small cut and pushing it down in like that. You see I'm just taking a very, very small cut and what I'm doing is what's classically known as rubbing the bevel. I'm rubbing the back end of this cutting edge or the non-cutting edge here against the material like so see I'm rubbing it against it like I'm not cutting anything at all but if you present the tip the cutting tip and just the very very edge of the tip it won't dig in and it'll just take off a very slight amount but if you turn the tool this way you'll take a deeper cut and if you want to take a lesser cut you turn it away like that and you get those actions in uh, the right way, and it's only practice that's going to um, do that for you. It's really, really easy to control. And if you can't see actually where you're cutting, with, by, where the actual edge is cutting, what you do, you look at the cut on the opposite side. That's one of the secrets. You don't actually look, after the initial cut, you're not looking at the, the, you're not looking at the cutting face because you can't see it because you've got all the swarf. You're looking at the opposite side of the material to see how the cut is performing. They don't treat you, they don't teach you these things in trade school. It's not until you get out of trade school and you, you get in the big world and start doing it for yourself. Then that's what you learn. Don't be in a rush. The slower the better. Little bit, little bit, and you'll get there. See, I'm taking a bit more of an aggressive cut now.
Don't be in a big hurry. Now you've got a good start on the uh, the sort of hollow end. You can actually go go both directions. So we're going to cut in. And rotate this around so both cutting surfaces are touching the material. Both surfaces are cutting the material and pull it out. Draw it out very carefully. So you can cut both directions. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm moving the tool post in. So the actual two post is actually inside of the, the, the bowl. So there is not so much overhang now with the bowl gouge. And um, it is more controllable and uh, it makes the job a whole lot easier. So here we go. We'll now scallop some more of this bowl out. Never be too quick to take too much material off at any one time. And personally, I don't wear gloves because you're working very close to a spinning object and it can catch material very easily. So if you wear shirts, do your shirts up, okay? So right, having removed the material from the inside of the bowl, all we're going to do now is sand it off um, so, and, and remove this stub. Um, so start off with um, a medium grit and I, I, I do this by hand on the lathe and I get a wad of it like this and hold it. So then, because this will get hot. And before you start sanding, put your face mask on. Because this will take off the wood like powder and there's a lot of airborne. So make sure your mask is well fitted. Then you can start your sanding.
Okay, now I use cedar oil for something like this. I'm working backwards here, so... Probably going to lose more than I'm putting on here. I have to do it this way. Quite a lot of soak into the wood. Look at the colours in that wood, in that oak. So it glistens in the light. Beautiful. So you, there you are, a little oak vase from a piece of firewood, as you saw. And Providing you're careful, you know, th there's nothing too difficult about it. And you girls out there, um, you don't have to have any real physical strength. Uh, if you can make a cake, you can make one of these. <laughs> Basically, you know, that, that's, you know, it's technique, not physical strength. So, I hope I've enlightened you all today. Not just the girls, but the guys as well who were interested. Um, and if I have, um, please press like and subscribe to my channel. And I have now 300 videos between the two of my channels. So let's get rid of this. Uh, to get to my second channel, there's a little banner there. Press on that. There's uh, 60 or 70 foot. Um, 60 or 70 videos on that one, and I'm adding to it all the time. Um, on my channel, you will see wood turning uh, on several different machines, shop jobs that I do around here, a little bit of furniture making, um, lasers. Now I'm going to step that up this year, and uh, milling machines, as in metal milling machines. I converted a, a, a little SIG CNC mini mill, uh, manual mill, two CNC, and I'll show you what, I've made about 10 videos on actually how to convert it, you know, how to make the different parts and how to do the whole job. Um, that's a very interesting group of uh, videos. And also I do CNC routing, and all of the associated programs with lasers, milling, and uh, routing, CNC computer work, uh, as well as the wood turning. So, thank you for joining me, and uh, see you again next time. And uh, if there's any, if I can help you in any way, if there's any questions, just, uh, you know, ask me in the comments section, and I'll see what I can do. So... It's bye for now.